Hello, in this exercise, we will use the toolbox to demonstrate how can we pick up the standard sleeve bearings in this type, the P bushing type. And we are going to make the very simple assembly. It will be like the support plate, which will be a three by three by one plate with a hole of one inch in the center. And we will have a pin, which will resemble the shaft with a 0.5 diameter, half inch diameter, and 2.5 inch in length. And you can see this at the page 607 of your book. So I'm going to make first the support plate. I will sketch it on a top plane as it sits on the top plane. I can use the centered rectangle. Going to make three by three. And I'm going to choose the top, the one of the horizontal line and one of the vertical line of this rectangle and specify that they are equal, but completely constrain my drawing. And I'm going to extrude this for a one inch. And finally, I'm going to make a hole of the size of the one inch and the hole will be centered on the face. And the hole type will be simple true type. Okay, I'm going to call this support plate and save it in my directory. Support plate and this can be a sleeve there because we have some other support plate and material let's say that this is alloyed steel alloy steel now we are going to make the pin and the pin is half inch in a diameter i'm going to sketch at the front plane one corner rectangle and I'm going to sketch a center line which will be higher than my rectangle so that I can select it. Going to select the diameter by dimensioning out so by clicking on the outside line, clicking on the center line and pulling left of the line and I will say the diameter is 0.5 and the height of the pin or shaft is 2.5 2.5 i'm going to revolve this guy going to revolve my sketch and because there is only one contour it is automatically selected assign the material and that can be also other steel and put 0 0.06 times 45 chamfers, 0 0.06 and 45 at the two cylindrical edges. And here is my pin. Pin, I can save this pin. Okay, I have designed all of the parts that I need. Now, I'm going to create a new assembly where I'm going to use my bearing from the toolbox and I will say the jig bushing tools and I will take the, take the jig, bushing, jig, jig bushing type P with the inner diameter of 0.5 and outside diameter of 1. So, I'm going to start by making a new assembly. Make assembly from part. I'm going to choose support plate as my base fixed part. And I'm also going to insert component existing part. And that will be the pin bearing. <coughs> and the pin bearing should float. Okay, so here they are. Now, I want here to insert the sleeve 
bearing and I will go on a toolbox. I first need to see that my toolbox is installed by going to the add-ins, tools, add-ins, and I need to have both toolbox clicked on. When I click on a design library of the toolbox, in the right hand side, left click on the design library, I will click on a toolbox and I will choose a standard in this case the ANSI inch. And I'm going to find the jig buff bushings. Here are the jig bushings and sleeve bearing and there is a all jig bushings. And I'm going to go for the type P and I'm going to left click on a jig bushing type, type P and bring it into the environment. Once I brought it in, the configuration tab has opened where I can, cons where I can configure my jig bushing. And I'm going to configure it to be a 0.5 by 1 bearing size. 0.5 by 1. Size point five, one half. Length is the one. And we are going to bring it in. Click OK. Confi body finished. And click OK. So we have a 0.5 is the internal diameter. And we can see that our hole that we guesstimate is not right. The hole is how big? So we need to find out what is the diameter of our jig bushing. By a same evaluate, measure the outside diameter of our 0.75. So that means that I need to display a notation for my show features dimension. Going to change my diameter hole and that's why I wanted it to be a very simple hole wizard and we need to save assembly before and we will call this jig we will call this sleeve bearing assembly and I'm going to change the dimension to what to a three quarter so it should be something less than a three quarter but for this exercise I'm going to put it as a three quarter. Point seventy five, three quarter. Now it is exactly the same dimension. And now I can align the two. I can check my mates. That coincident mate, which was inherited, I'm going to delete. Concentric I will keep and I'm going to make the coincident mate between the <coughs> Yes, it's supposed to, and it is a one inch. It should be a one inch long If I make coincident here to here, mate, be a coincident. Let's see, is this a one inch long or not? We can evaluate the dimension or we can just click on our bushing. 
and we can edit toolbox component and the length we can switch back to the length of one and look what happened how easy it is to change to the correct one and finally i'm going to make my shaft with the inner of my bushing and i'm going to make it let's say that i want this to go all the way to the bottom that i want shaft to be coincidental with the bottom and here is my assembly finished so i have my pushing with my pin and the shaft is able to freely rotate so this demonstrates doing it through the toolbox now the next step that we are going to do we are going to try to get it how about from the mcmaster car or from the catalog i will open a web browser and i'm going to go to the mcmaster car and p bushings let's see what will come out okay sleeve bushing plain sleeve bushings plain bearings okay here is my sleeve bearing that i want and i can choose whatever model i want here and let's see that i just want a standard one multi-purpose there is also oil embedded bronze sleeve bearing which actually are like a bronze sponge okay let's say we want a light duty dry run sleeve bearing and I want out oh, and I want for shaft diameter of one half. So I will click on a one half and I will specify the length of the one. And look what happened. I can choose here different materials, specify nylon, and let's say for outside diameter three quarter of the inch here is our model what i will do i will click on a product number 6389k119 and there is a product detail icon if i click on a cad i and scroll down i have here an option to download it in a different cad format and i'm going to choose the 3d solidworks and click save and the part is open it and i can insert that part back into my assembly and i know the cost of the part and i know now exact product number so here is my part so if i go back into my solidworks assembly and if i click on my mcmaster jig bushing right click there is actually an option to replace a component Let's see actually if we have this place weight entities. That's there you are. Let's see if we actually, because it's a specific case, let me just see here. If I have here replace component. Yeah, there is a replace component, but there is no for this one. Uh huh. There is actually, sorry, I just did not see it. Left click on a replace component and I'm going to replace it with the one that I picked up from the McMaster car. And all instances. And reattach mates. And now what do we have here? 
there are some mates that we cannot reattach. So let's see first which one is the face. So I'm going to use this face of the component. Go to the next one. And as you can see, as I go through the, it just say the faces. So now I'm going to choose now I'm going to choose this face to be, and what is, and the inner face of the bearing. And as I choose those, <coughs> I have all of the mist entities. Con I have all of the mist things done. I can click OK, and I have successfully replaced component from my virtual toolbox to the real component from and let's see which coincident is this one okay that's this coincident i will need to change and that's the least problem i will just push it back and remade that those two are The pin face and the face of the bearing should be the same. Okay, so it's mated now. So now we do have in our tree not any more toolbox component, but we have a real component from the catalog. So in this demonstration, we've seen basics of how to use the toolbox components and also basic how to find the supplier components, how to find the supplier components on the supplier website. Okay, this concludes this demonstration.